Hi, and welcome to Random Access uh, PC Building Show today. I'm Matthew Buzzy from PC Mag. This is John Burek, editor in chief of Computer Shopper. We have a bunch of parts here. We're going to build a computer. Uh, John, what is the sort of concept of this computer? Well, what we have here is um, the parts for a 4K gaming PC that you would use um, in your living room. So uh, what we decided to do was to get a very um, home theater, like sort of amplifier looking case here mm -hmm. and pick out a bunch of parts that will fit in there but also be good enough for 4K gaming with most settings turned all the way up. So okay. some serious stuff here even though sense. it looks like a very small case. Yeah, some you sit back on your couch, play mm -hmm. some games. Use this. Yep. Um, yeah. We'll lean get into back. that. Yeah. yeah. That's um, a um, that's a great um, uh, home theater sort of solution for gaming on your lap. Um, we also have a GTX 1080 card here, which um, just high end and a mini at that. A mini, yes, yeah. It's Space box, saving. Box looks big, but you'll see when we open it later yeah. that it's pretty darn small. And um, um, this uh, edition of the Blu-ray player also makes it a nice media streaming hub. So you yeah, can this watch. is actually an ultra Blu-ray player Sit for 4K, uh, 4K discs. Yeah. So, so. Um, we'll get into that later. That's got a lot of uh, sure. sort of provisos and things about it. Um, what else and, we got? Yeah, and a high-end Intel chip here. So we'll go through all the parts as we build. Um, we're going to clear the table for the moment here and actually um, open up the case, get that sort of sorted out. And Show then... everyone what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any questions at all, Social Pete is manning the station throughout this whole build. So type in comments, type in thoughts, type in questions about what components we're using, why, what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, if you can't see quite what we're doing, we'll try to get the best angles. But just show, you know, ask, ask away. We'll, we'll answer. We'll talk through it. we got time. we yep. got time. we got all afternoon. Time. Right? All afternoon. Or morning if you're elsewhere. We'll keep going. This is a 12-hour build. Let's yeah. go. All right. So um, let's clear right. the table. Yeah, let's get clear the table. All right. Let's so I'm going to do some work on the case here while you do that. Please. And um, we will then work on the motherboard. So we're going to move this over a bit. I'm going to take, it actually, this out of the way. All right. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is a Silverstone case. Mm -hmm. Silverstone makes a lot of aluminum cases. This one's actually mostly steel, um, but is uh, sort of a smaller version of a larger case that they do in the series called Grandia. Um, it's sort of meant to slide into your home theater system or your home theater rack. And um, it's about a foot deep, so if you're considering doing this build yourself, you probably want to measure the shelves before you do uh, yeah. any of that. So we're going to open it up here. I just a couple screws out of the back there. Shh. All right, there sound, we go. Sound effects for me all day. Yeah, there we go. Stay tuned. <laughs> so when you get this case, it doesn't actually come with these really nice magnetic holders while the screws sort it out. Those are great, by the way. Yeah. If, you ever, if you're building a lot of stuff, just grab, grab yourself one of those. Right. So, yeah, we sorted out all the screws in advance. It's really, uh, you didn't want to watch us do this for about 20 minutes and figure out which one was which. I don't know. Taking screws out of plastic bags is kind of my, my hobby. Oh, ah, well. Just do that on the side for fun. I, no, not, no, no, don't no judge. Hey, no, yeah. No, yeah, no, definitely not. Please. So this is the case um, interior here, and you'll notice there's a whole bunch of brackets here. I'm going to take them out. Um, they get in your way when you're building. Yeah, you can't. Simply. Yeah, you can't. I have, by the way, courtesy of analyst Will Greenwald, a, uh, a lightsaber style vintage uh, screwdriver. Oh, so well, maybe you should bringing be doing a lot this of panache, then. bringing a lot of style to uh, the build experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take these out. If you want to, yeah, I can help. I'll, there, I'll go yeah. to town. I'll put this thing to work. It's not just it's not just show, folks. <laughs> this kyber crystal is ready to go. All right, let's do it. All right, you know where to get that one out. It's doing a lot of spinning. Yeah, that's all right. There we go. All oh. right. Oh. Oh. Or not. Keep it coming. Yep. You know, I'll pull, give a little pull pressure while we're uh, unscrewing there. Doink. Two man job, folks. Yeah, I know, right? There we go. All right. Oh, it, the magnetic one. Magnetic Good less. to know. All right. Just one more out of the back here. Got to get the bracket out of the way. So what are we going to put in first? What's going to be our starting point? Well, for we're going to put the build? motherboard in, uh, but what we're going to do is dry fit it. So this comes out. We'll be dealing with this later. We'll put this aside. So let's turn this back around here. So if you want to grab the motherboard, I would um, love to. We're going to just do a dry fit of that, and then we'll install. What <laughs> I would we need love to. to. I made it. Up, I made it the base of this pile of components I built. So allow <laughs> me to go. allow excellent. me to extract it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, excellent. All right. So I'm just going to clean up some screws over here. Move things over. So we've got an ASUS motherboard here. This is a Strix Z270e. Runs about two hundred dollars. Um, has nice lights and. Um, Sort of uh, blingy things that unfortunately we won't see once we seal up the case. Oh man! Yeah. Oh and, beans. Uh, yeah, and if um, if you could actually, there's a Intel chip down there as well. Uh, of moderate import to our build. Yeah. So um, what did we go with to pair these two? What this is, is this? This is a Core i7-7700K. That's the highest end chip that you can get for this board. Overclockable, um, of course. Yep, runs about three hundred, three hundred fifty dollars, depending on where you buy it from, who has it on sale. So we're going to install that in the board and then get a cooler on top of it. So let's unpack the board. Here we go. We have a piece of uh, bubble wrap under here, which will... Yeah, always good to work on uh, on a surface, not straight onto your 
table or desk. Yeah, protect, protect, you, protect these delicate circuits. Right, and also protect your desk. There is that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're probably going to need some of the stuff in that box later. But yeah, we're just gonna for, now. for now. Um, let's put the chip in. Let's okay. do that. Let's right. really jump right in there. It always feels a little <laughs> premature. Like, surely we have to do something else first. But nope, really, that's you, the first thing. Yeah, you just got to get started. All right, so our i7-7700K, we're going to take it out here. In a typical Intel retail box, it would actually be in a plastic holder, but we have it in a box here because we're forever packing and unpacking this chip for that's various true. projects. So let's trim this a little bit this way. And what we're going to do is we're going to release this catch here. There we go. All right. I, I told you. Pop off the piece of plastic on top. What we have is an open slot. Oh, it's going to be an open socket. Sure, we can yeah, get you that, that up in the bit? camera. Show them All what's right. going on. All right. Okay. Maybe turn it. Uh, yeah, that way it might be a better angle because this might be getting in the way of the camera. Yep. All right. Excellent. There we go. Look at that. So yeah, we released this latch, drew it up, right. and now okay, you can so drop you the chip flat. in. Yeah, so I don't know. I think if you tried to if you tried to do it while I was holding it up like this, it'd be kind of a sort of a challenge build. That would yeah. We may not get this thing to boot. That's for sure. <laughs> so there's a lot of pins in there. And Secondary concern. <laughs> so on the chip here, um, any um, Intel chip that you get or AMD one for that matter is going to have a little. Um, arrow in the corner um, pointing towards one of the corners. In this case, it's pointing this way. So what you want to do is look at your socket, mm -hmm. and there's a matching arrow, which you probably can't see on camera there, but it's in this corner. And what we're going to do is make sure that the chip matches the arrow and place it very gently down. Always a gentle process. Don't touch the pins. You don't want to mess them up. You don't want to bend them. You don't want to get oil on them. You don't want to yeah, do anything like that. Yeah, just place it as, simple, uh, as a gently as you can. And then step and never away. Force. Right. Never touch it. Looking good. <laughs> All right, so let's put it down over the Close the hatch. Bracket. We have a question while you're doing that. Uh, why a core i7 instead of a 5 or 9? Um, this, this sort of build is going to be um, for people doing high-end gaming. So in addition to that, you're probably going to be doing some multitasking. Um, i7 just generally helps gaming. It's going to be faster. But if you're going to be multitasking, if you're going to be streaming or doing anything on the side too, more cores, more hyper-threading. Uh, it just, yeah, it just makes I5, everything faster. Yeah. yeah, the i5 doesn't support hyper-threading. So you basically get four cores in either case. Um, you could go with the i5. That's actually if you are on my, my build, my gaming build is an i5. It's mm -hmm. it's it's enough. Yeah, um, I'm not, I don't do like you know photo editing. I don't do. Uh, my cameraman's giving me a, a sh just a shake of his head. He <laughs> dude, he wouldn't stand for it, but I have an i5. Yeah, but either way, you could go with either, and you could save um, a good hundred to 130 bucks there by going with the i5 7600, um, which is a perfectly legitimate thing to do. Yeah. Um, so we yeah, got Jono. Yeah. So <laughs> our camera person is revolting on us, um, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so let's put some thermal paste on this thing. Yes. Uh, so uh, where do we get the thermal paste from? Where do we, we get the thermal paste from? It will be in the box of the cooler. Oh. So, <laughs> all right. Look at the cooler. That's amusing. <laughs> this is the uh, power supply. The yep. You got oh no, it. this is it. Yep, that's it. All right. So Noctua. Noctua is an Austrian company that's well known for uh, rather plain looking but high performance coolers. Mm -hmm. um, this one is called the NHU9S. It's special in that um, it's low profile. In other words, um, it doesn't come up too high. And that's very important in a case like this where there is a lot of sure. uh, vertical clearance. So if you wouldn't mind, just, yeah, you can work out the, the packaging of oh. the cooler there. All right. So the Noctua NHU9S uh, uh, uh. runs about 60 bucks. Um, comes with the cooler itself here, which uh, Matt is unpacking. All right, excellent. Look at that. Look at that guy. All right. Some heavy duty stuff. And as with any cooler um, for a high end build, it comes with a whole box of accessories that will take you a fair bit of time to sort out. Fortunately for you, we did that already, and um, you won't have to watch us stumble through all the parts here. You're welcome. Right. So we have a a bag of common parts, which we can uh, work with. <laughs> common <And> parts. parts. <laughs> That's a really funny bag label. <laughs> these are just common parts. Common parts. And these are for AMD. We are building an Intel system, so those stay in the box. You stay there. Right. Okay. And then we also have a very long screwdriver, which I don't know if we're going to need it, but... It's no, light, it it's no lightsaber, but it'll do. Yeah. And a uh, bag of screws. Of course. Don't leave home. Never leave home without it. Yep. And our bracket for actually mounting it to the... The board. So let me just clean up some of this stuff here. A little red piping on this, uh, on yeah, this cooler. It's, um, yeah, this is a very high performance cooler. It looks yeah. sort of um, unassuming, but it's a um, pretty high end thing for the size. Sweet. Yeah, so let me open up this bag here. High end is good. Yeah. So, um, so, what other types of coolers could you get away with in a system like this? We're using this one, but I mean, liquid cool this, go right ahead. Not a lot of space in this small case yeah, is you the problem. Could, you'd probably have to do a lot of measurement to see if the, any particular liquid cooler would fit yeah. in there. There are some mounts you probably would be able to do so, but um, I would not recommend it given the uh, um, 
dimensions that you're working sure. with in here. If you want to overclock, you want a bigger case than that. For sure. So uh, I think the only thing we're going to need here, unless you want the Noctua badge, which actually is the nicest badge I think I've that's, ever seen. Yeah, that's anything. not a nice badge. That's serious. I mean, yeah. it's a nice badge, yeah. All right. It's like heavy metal. Um, so we're going to take the, uh, the board, take this bracket, and it's going to go in underneath, like so. And in doing so, we have a bunch of posts that are sticking up um, through the uh, holes in the board. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put that down here. Okay. Ooh. All right. Paste it up. Paste it up. All right. So our Noctua branded thermal paste. I'm going to take the tip off. So obviously, it adheres the, the CPU itself to the top of the cooler, so mm -hmm. it can conduct and be nice and cool. Um, some of them come pre-applied. A lot of liquid coolers, it comes pre-applied to the top, so you don't have to do this yourself. Um, I know people get really into which cool which thermal paste they're using also like oh it needs like the diamond platinum Arctic level silver. yeah it's yep. it's 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 all good it's you all basically fine. put a, a bead on there about the size of a pea and um, then this is an excellent use for business cards for people you don't like actually i don't know who this person is so i don't necessarily don't like them but you use that to smear it to cover the top of the die it's all up in there all right that's one that's one paste filled uh, chip yep i think we got you, enough you're done good all right, I think we nailed it. So now, the question is, which orientation do we use for that cooler? Jeez. So we took that off. All right. So now let's think about this. This is going to be the back. Huh? Of, this huh? is going to be the back huh? of the case, facing here. Indeed. And we want the air to be flowing through the cooler and out the back. The back would be so let's, that away. So, so we're going to orient the board like so. Whoops, lost our lost our place. Lost our plate. Move your accoutrement. Mm-hmm. Sorry, just a yeah, it's sort of stuff you want to plan out ahead of time so you don't just like, all right, I'm ready, and plop it down, and then you're like, ah, oh, crap. Right, so what we have here is the board and the orientation of the case here. So this is going to be sticking out the back, and we want the airflow to be going from here out the back. So you want to rotate that 180 degrees. Yoink. Like so, and let's see if it'll work that way or if we're going to have to change the orientation of the cooler. Um, that should do it, but we need to put on the brackets. Okay. We do. Yeah. Well, we so, got it figured out. All right, so we're going to take a look at the uh, the manual for this because that who reads baggie, instructions? Am I right? That, that baggie requires yeah. There's uh, a lot of there's a yeah, lot of, a lot, of uh, bits. a lot of bits in here. So I think should I give you a, a variety pack sneak peek on yeah. the, kind of, <laughs> the kinds of stuff we're working with here. All right, so with the little black plastic things mm -hmm. over the um, posts there, all right. they create space between the board and the cooler, like so. Yep. Doink, doink. Grab the rest of these. Rolling away from me. They're rolling away. No, no, don't let them get away. Okay, and then looking at the manual, it, ma it matters whether these are faced outward or inward. Sure. So it looks to me like Try they to give go you like some. This. That's yeah. good. We're good. Um, All right. If you want to grab the, uh, the top screws. Um, oh, the, yeah, the, the, the hand screws. Yeah, those are them. Mm -hmm. Just go to, yep. go to town on these. Yeah, go to town. Yeah, the other pieces, I believe, are for uh, an AMD-based build, the uh, uh, spacers. That makes so sense. we're not going to be using those this time. Screw them on tight. I like hand screws more than regular screws at any opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these um, I would tighten to about finger tightness, and then grab a screwdriver and just give them a, just a little scooch to make sure uh, they're tight. That's good. All right, and this is what we did, in case you can't see here. Brackets on, screwed in, voila, ready for the cooler. All right, so now the cooler, on the underside here, you'll see there are a couple of holes with spring-loaded screws on them. Um, now, one thing I notice here is that it's going to be pretty difficult to get to this screw with this fan in the way, so the fan's got to go. Um, so there are some clips on the side. I'm trying to make it easy for you, yeah. as easy as possible. Yeah, this is the part usually where you cut yourself. Yay. So everybody hold their breath. Uh, no blood this time. Good old Teflon hands, John, I yeah, say. There we go. So this is going like so. Um, and then we're going to take the holes there and align them with these posts that are sticking out of the board. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Okay, I think this is where that long screwdriver comes in. Oh, so we're going to... Provided. Yeah, you see they actually cut a groove into the thing here where you can fit that screwdriver. Genius. So if you could... Give that just a few turns until it mounts. I'm putting some pressure on the top of the the unit. That's eh, probably good. Don't want to screw it all the way down. So let's uh, do this one a bit on this side. All right, if you can give that until it, um, give that some turns until it's snug. Okay. And then in the meantime, I'm going to figure out how to get this back on. Okay. Boom. All right. So. 
Let's see how this works. One. Pretty seamlessly, actually. Yeah, it wasn't bad. All right. Still have all the fingers. Hey, look at you. All right, so CPU cooler on. Now, the only thing we have is this little <laughs> cable hanging out here. <laughs> kind of chilling. Yeah, so let's take a look at the board and see where the main CPU power connector is. Uh, CPU fan. That looks nope. like yep. it. That's it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. The CPU, so it'd be hard to see there, but I'm going to tilt the board up a bit. Yeah, so the board, if you don't know, the <laughs> mother reports are labeled with this tiny, tiny, tiny font written onto the board itself. Um, mm -hmm. It tells you which can, which head everything is for. Yeah, so we have two here. One's called CPU fan and one called CPU fan opt, which is for a second fan if we had a second one. So we're going to put it down, uh, hold it up a bit, and um, plug it into the main CPU connector. Um, okay. Little tiny pins. Yep. Match the, we'll match the number. Okay, so that's on. We'll route the cable better later. Does that look like it's on there? Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. There we go. All right, so CPU... Uh, cooler and CPU installation complete. Not so, not so oh. bad. Okay, not so bad. All right, so let's um, take a break. Right. You know, go hang around. All right. There's, no, there's, no, some... there's no time to stop. No, there's no stopping here. Stop around here. How long do you expect the the total build to take? Uh, hmm. Hour, hour and a half, maybe. Yeah, not the I most mean, complicated. Mm -hmm. That I, might have been the most abnormal part of the whole build, really. Yeah, well, once we get in here, it's going to get a little tight. And yeah, do that's, a lot of cable routing, so. that's the thing. This case is a little small. Other than that, yeah, nothing I mean, here, particularly complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we're going to do is uh, mount this. But first, before we do that, we've got to put the RAM on. I love we RAM. Could, we could do the RAM inside the case, well, you know, but yeah, why? where people can see. So we're working with some DDR4 Trident, uh, GCL Trident Z RAM. Right, so let's pull that out. Um, one thing we're going to need is the... Um, the motherboard manual to see which slots these have to go in. You so want to go, you you go box digging? Right, that. Yeah, thank you. Go box hunting. Box hunting. All right. I'm going to ram it up. All right. R r ram it up. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm, what we got? Oh, uh, okay. it's, it's not RGB RAM. It is just red RAM. So right. It does light up. Hope you like red because that's all, that's all you got. Well, we're going to be running this with the cover closed, so... Uh, like the color or not, You're not I think, I think uh, we'll have to, you know, just admire it on the first boot and then seal it up. Right. All right. It's too bad. It's such a pretty RAM, too. Such a nice RAM. Um, Ooh. Very nice. Ooh. So I'm going to check out the Ooh. manual here and see where it goes. Um, dim installation. So RAM <coughs> dim installation, page 2-7. Okay. So the question is, which of the slots does it go in? Which of the slots, indeed? We have four options. Right. And so we get it right. Here we go. All right. So... Let's see. We're doing dual channel, which means... A2 and B2. A2, B2. So if you could find slots A2 and B2 on I there. like reading nothing more than tiny, tiny font. Yeah, it's labeled here, um, A2 and then B2, so the second and the fourth slot yeah, so here. So pull those down. All right. Going to go ahead and try to show you where I'm doing this, just in case you can see. Um, All right. Make sure the uh, oh, notch is lined wrong up. Wrong way, yep. 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 So there's a notch in the bottom of the module that uh, Matt is lining up with a notch inside the slot. Yep. And um, as soon as, uh, soon as it I do snaps that? in, you'll, you'll hear it. Yep, there you go. The, the telltale click. If I'm not talking over it, that is. Yeah. yeah. So that, right. one's, that one's snugly in there, Looking so good. you can see. And then B2 is going to be this one, so I'm going to go right. ahead and do that. Yeah, so some of these boards have... Um, little levers at the end, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's a lever at both ends, sometimes it's a lever at yeah, one Yeah, it's throwing end. me off. I keep pushing both of them, but I only need one. Yeah, these last few boards that we've used um, in the lab here have only had levers at one end. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you just want to make sure it gives you a solid click. If it doesn't, then uh, you may run into trouble We're later. We're good. We're looking good? We're in. Excellent. All right. Beautiful. Ram in place. Ram in place indeed. All right. So um, that's looking good. I think what we're going to do now is get the board inside the case, and uh, then we can start wiring it up. So Let's uh, do it. Let's do that. I'm just going to Take a look in the motherboard box because there was a part I forgot to get out. Um, let's see. What are you, what are you fishing for? Uh, the I.O. plate. So the I.O. Yes. plate is... This goes flush against the back for your ports. You'll recognize, you'll recognize these shapes. USB, etc., etc., Ethernet. Um, you just put it flush through the back so that it lines up with the ports on the board, which in this case I can show you. Yeah, if you turn that around. Are there. All right. So let's unwrap this puppy here. All right, so question, which way is up? Let's see. Doink. So always good to dry fit it. TVI the is up top Because you can put it in upside down. You got it the right way. That looks good. Uh, let's see, it's a little bit snug. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So what we're going to do is snap it into the back of the case over here. 
And this is actually an area where you can also cut yourself because you're dealing with some sort of... Uh, oh, pops a bubble. Ah, there we go. Got <laughs> <laughs> some raw aluminum here that's a little... Don't get stabbed. I will try uh, not we to. We have a question. Uh. Have you mentioned the total cost of this build? Uh, um, we have no. not. Um, the total would be um, somewhere between 1500 and 1700 um, Video card prices, as we'll discuss a little later, are extremely volatile they right now. They fluctuate like mad. Right. All components do, but currently, for particular reasons right now, video cards especially are yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah, especially mid-range video cards are yeah. through the roof because of Ethereum miners are sucking them up, and then that also is pushing up the prices on high-end cards, which you could actually buy at the moment, but right. just at higher prices because the lower-end stuff is not yeah, available. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. So there's that, and also if you went with the uh, i5 versus the i7, you could sway about 100 to $150 there. Right. So... It looks like it's going to be about 1500 to 1700 total. So mid, a mid-range desktop build, I'd say. Yeah, and uh, Social Pete can put up a, a link. We have a, a full uh, build-out of this on Computer Shopper with um, prices broken out. and List of links. what each component is and all that. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. So here we are. We've got the I.O. plate in place. Um, let's get the motherboard in get place. Get in there. All right. So let's take this. All right. We are going to lower it the slowly. Of the moment of truth. All right, it looks like, um, let's see. Cables in your way? Case yeah. cables? Yeah, if you could uh, pass them to the side. If you can it. Yep. yep, just until I lower this. Gladly. All right. So we have um, nine mounts inside the case here that we pre-fit for the, uh, the board. Um, we won't bore you with the, the details there, but... It's one of the more boring things to watch. Yeah, it's getting all these mounts in place. Um, this that way the board just doesn't sit straight on the case. It sits on these little mm-hmm. pegs. Yep, looks like we're just about right. Gotta press a little bit. Yeah, we've got to get a little more forward. I'll try to hold it here. You know, let me just get this plastic out of the way here. We don't need it. We Where go. we're going, we don't need bubble wrap. That's right. <laughs> I think we're just about there. Just about. The holes aren't quite lined up, so I think we can go forward no, a little more. We got it. There we go. There it is. Perfect. Okay. All right. So the board, the board's mounted, and now we've got to go into the. Um, you can let that go. Yeah. And uh, go back to Swap our. Swap sides. Thing. We're gonna move the case over here. a little bit. So warning our, our camera crew that we're moving this over to the center because it'll be. Woo the, woo woo. Hopefully it won't fall. Boom. Still good? All right. So now we get to the buckets of screws. Buckets of screws. All right. So what do we have here? Um, we pre-fit these before because usually what happens when you're building a PC is you try every screw in the hole until it fits. Um, you don't want to see us do that. It's not pretty. So um, Everyone have, loses. Yeah. So we have a, b- a bunch of screws here that are um, uh, meant for mounting the motherboard. Mm-hmm. We have nine of them. So um, if you and I would like to get to, get to work get, on that, get down to it. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah, there's these pre-drilled uh, holes here in the thing, and you just kind of want to line them up and go to town. All right. They're so, not all so probably, quite lined up. Yeah, once you get the ones on the outer end in, the rest of them will slide into place. So yeah. usually your best bet is to do one on the um, end furthest away from the I.O. plate, because that will create pressure to push the board to line up with the, uh, the mounts on the board. Right. Or the mounts on the case, excuse me. So that's looking good. I mean, in all honesty, in the labs here, usually we get about two screws in, and we're like, yeah, that's enough. That's fine. That's enough. <laughs> Board's not going anywhere. So this is rotating a bit. This angle is, uh, it's not what I'd, I'd choose to build at. Yeah, I mean, we could rotate it around for a moment. and uh, Maybe we should. Yeah, or to the side. Yeah, that would be good. Can't quite. So the, um, yeah. Can't yeah, it's, it's going to be tricky for uh, the studio we're trying, Yeah, we're trying to show you as much as we possibly can, but we also want to, you know, make right. progress, so... So this one's in the corner. We're going to actually take off these uh, pieces on the end here. This might give you a little more visibility. I'm in. No. Ah, oh, that's all right. That if top, you can't get it out, we'll just shake it out. That top corner one's proven tricky. Maybe you'll have more luck. Okay. Doink. Get it? Yeah. That, okay. That top right so one. That one there? Okay, yeah, I'm in a better spot for that. So, yeah, so there are nine screws here. Um, depending on our uh, level of patience, we may do six. We get all nine in, I'd say that's a good That's, really that's good a good day. day, yeah. Yeah. Whoops. Um, so where are some corners, while we're doing this, where are some areas you could chop the price off this build a little if you wanted? I think the graphics card is an obvious one if you want to bump down to a 1070, but then well, your four, just, the full yeah. 4K aspect, kind of you kind of lose that, so depending yeah. how, how important that is to you. Right, the 4K aspect is sort of 1080 is where you want to be if you're going to be playing at 4K, unless you're willing to sort of dial things down at which mm-hmm. point. You probably should just play at a you know, lower resolution. Lower resolution, with, yeah. yeah. So I'll let you finish it up. But yeah, I mean, you could cut the CPU down fully down to a, uh, an i5. Uh, an i5. Um, you could 
probably go with a somewhat cheaper CPU cooler, but you're not going to change. You, know, you uh, need one. Yeah, you need one. You're not going to lose much you know, money there. You could always lower storage capacity, but that's no yeah, fun. That's no fun either. Yeah. All right. <laughs> none, so, none of it's any fun. Ever lower, lowering the price is never fun. Yeah, we did sort of. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM is what you'd want, mm -hmm. really, too. Yeah. Eight's kind of. Mm. Kind of dicey. Yeah, so I think um, what we built out there is it's somewhat high end, but yeah. it's um, also if you want to do 4K, seriously do 4K and keep the settings yeah. way up. This is that's really the concept for the machine. So there's a floor you just have to hit if you really want to do 4K. Yep. Okay. So what did we just do? We, uh, we screwed the board in. We screwed the board in, right? So now we got a bunch of cables here. And yes. This is this is always um, a fun part. Um, so we're gonna unscrew this bundle of cables. These are all the cables that power the various things in the case, like switches and ports. So we're going to put them all out of the way and um, work on them one at a time. So, whoops, this one got caught in there. All right, actually, that's really good. Just keep them in there. Look at that. Oh, eh. oh, I cut it. It's got a little sharp edge there. Yeah, so I don't want to scrape anything. All right, so a couple of things here. This is a USB 3 connector. Um, we're going to plug that into the USB 3 um, port on the board, which should be fairly easy to find. Um, let's see. Here it is over here. That guy, yep. All right, so there's a notch on the slot and a notch on the uh, port on the board. We're just going to snap that in. Okay. There we go. We're going to put that cable there, although it can't stay there later. Looking yeah. good? Okay. Yeah. This is HD audio. That's for the front panel audio connectors. You probably won't be using them on a system like this, but we're going to plug it in. Can't um, hurt. Yep. We have um, one pin in this connector that's blocked. And that matches up with the AAFP yeah. um, set of pins on the board there, which also has the same pin blocked. Yeah, a lot of the stuff looks really similar. A lot of these pins, if you've never done it before, um, the headers all look really similar and the pins on the board look really similar. That's the key way to tell is they leave one blocked out and it matches on there, one is blocked out. So. Right, yeah, generally speaking, if you're doing this on your own for the first time, you want to check the manual and the manual will show you which one of these uh, things match up to which cable, yeah. and um, you generally don't want to guess at it, because um, no. I I have blown up a board or two. Yeah, sometimes time. not catastrophic, but sometimes yes, so. <laughs> yeah, they do look similar, and if it, basically if you're forcing it on and it doesn't fit, then stop. Yeah, there are, the few, there are a few things in the build you'll have to actually force in if nothing ever feels like it's fitting. Um, so I think the RAM and probably the graphics card, you kind of got to just shove yeah. in there more than anything else. Yeah, definitely have to use a little more force than... The rest of the stuff should just fit. Right. So here's the thing. I'm looking in the box here for what's called a Q connector, which is a little connector that's used for the front panel... Uh, yep, letter Q. Um, for the front panel ports. And I'm thinking Asus maybe did not include one with this board. Whoops, a uh, doodle. Yeah, I um, would have thought they would have. They usually do with uh, almost every board. What's that, our alternative? Our alternative would be to plug these four very thin cables here, if you'd like to hold them. I'd um, love to hold them. Uh, straight into the board, which will be a little tedious, but we <laughs> may have to do it. Let's see, I'm going once uh, more through the box. So many. No, there is no Q connector. Okay. All right, well, that's why you pay for a higher-end board. Yes, these do, this is not a high-end board right, in and of but itself. But super high-end ones. Yeah. So. They come with very useful things like the light for the hard drive activity, uh, the power light, the reset switch. So, yeah, these are kind of like system essential plugs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take a look in the manual here and see where we plug them in. Um, it's like a bouquet. Yeah. Look, John. For you. Uh, oh, thank you. You shouldn't have. No, you really, you really, really shouldn't, shouldn't, you really shouldn't I have. I really don't want that. Yeah, thank you, though. I, I, so it's all the counts, they say. That's so they say. So um, front panel connector is uh, number 11, which is in the corner over here, and has, it's, it will be impossible to see without a microscope, so I'm just going to plug these in um, and let you describe to the studio audience what's happening. Um, in, so excruciating detail. Yeah. The so, pin so, so is coming closer. <laughs> so the screen, the um, the screening on the board here has um, uh, labels for each of these cables, and I'm going to just go ahead and plug them in. There's also a guide in the manual for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And meanwhile, why don't you um, talk to folks about our video card uh, choice here? Yeah, video card. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to grab it. Um, Please do. Just in case you don't want to watch, in case you don't want to watch John plug tiny pins into tiny connectors. Um, yeah, this is the Zotac Mini GTX 1080. The 1080 is among the highest end cards NVIDIA has in its current uh, Pascal architecture. Um, that includes, above it would be the 1080 Ti, and if you have a million dollars to spend, a Titan X. Um, those two are super premium cards. This is kind of, the, uh, some people get a, a Ti, but this is kind of the most reasonable consumer card most people would, would buy. Um, under this, the 1070, the 1060, the 1050 Ti, and the 1050. But this one is... Pure, pure fire for uh, Q, even QHD gaming. Um, it can, of course, as we're doing, do, QH, uh, do 4K. But 60 frames of 4K with a single card, 
uh, that's a stretch. You're going to get somewhere above 30, maybe probably 40, um, depending on the rest of your components, um, in most modern games uh, with a 1080. So you can go higher than this. It'll cost you, though. <laughs> this is kind of where it ramps up. Um, and the mini we've chosen because this case is a little small. The full-size yep. card is yay big. This is, this is a little shorter. So we're already a little tight on space, so we're not going to go full length. Um, yeah, if you take it out, actually, you can show folks yeah, relative why not? space here while I'm... Looking at the manual here. What do, I, what do I got to lose? Yeah, this is fascinating. I'm sure watching me leaf through the manual. I'm I'm riveted. Mm -hmm. Zotac. So yeah. it's not tiny by any means. Don't let the word mini before I show it to you uh, fool you. But it's not as long. It's not nearly as long as um, the standard like, yeah, Founders I mean, Edition 1080. Yeah, be about this long. So yeah. you're lopping a couple of uh, inches yeah. off the end. Yeah. So mini is maybe a misnomer, but if you know the normal size of the card, it's it's very it's clear. very it's very mini. Yes, yes, indeed. All right, so we have a bouquet of cables here, which I believe I've plugged into the correct place. But if this system does not boot, I know exactly where to go back first to look. That's good. Me, yeah. you're going to go no, back and blame me. No, it's all me. <laughs> That's actually all Asus's manual, which actually is not terribly clear on where these go. There's one schematic in there, which suggests where they go, and unless I'm missing the correct one, um, I think that's it. Yeah. So. Anyway, we've I'm going to try my best not to step on the 1080 I just put on the ground. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, so just to recap what I did in there, I plugged in the hard drive LED cable, the power um, LED cable that shows the front of the system, yep. you know, light up to show that it's on, boop, boop. Um, the power switch and the reset switch. So those... Essential two, system functions. Yes, they are. And they, there was a graph in the manual here that shows you how to do it. So I won't bore you with the details. Um, that's done. And I think we're ready to move on to the next thing. What is the next thing? What is the next thing? It could be whatever we want it to be, John. But uh, it could be. Some things make more sense than others. Well, I'm looking at my cheat sheet under here because... Um, What's the next step? Power supply. All right. On it. All right. Let's do it. Should clean Bam. it up here a bit? Ugh. The big square box that powers your system. There we um, go. We've gone with a, um, a low profile, I believe. Well, it's uh, actually short. -ish. Short. It's short. Right, so low profile is generous. Right. So with power supplies, you can basically get two sizes um, in a compact system. It could be ATX, but short. ATX is what goes into a regular mm -hmm. um, size desktop, but yes. some of them can be a little shorter than others. Then there's what's called SFX, which is very compact and is meant for smaller cases than this. This is ATX, but it's short. So somewhere um, in between. Right. So if we want to unbox it, there's there's um, from Cooler Master. Yeah. So how many how many watts are we dealing with? Uh, 550 watts. This is actually we um, went a little low on the wattage because we know we're never going to put a second card in here, and um, this should pretty much get in under the wire for. Um, yep. Uh, I love power supplies. Yeah. They're just big metal cubes. It's my favorite thing. Here you go. <laughs> All right. Hey. <laughs> for a 1080 and a, and a seven, uh, yeah. 700. So this power supply. Um, is not like a lower end one in that it's a modular power supply, fully modular, meaning that you could plug in only the cables you want, leave the rest out. So you'll notice there's a whole lot of connectors on the edge of this power supply here, and we've um, got a bag of this cables bag to is put in there. Yeah, filled with cables, mm -hmm. filled to the brim. So dump them out. Let's see what we got. Uh, all right. So. so many. All right. So let's put this down here for a moment. See what we got. This we will use last because this is plugging it into the wall. That's the kind of final final check. Yeah, that's the one that. Uh, that's if everything else goes smoothly. Right. This is this one is big um, in that it has a lot of connectors on mm -hmm. it and a lot of connectors on the other end. They go into the end of the power supply. That's the main power connector for the system. So we'll definitely need that. Um, sure. Let's see. SATA. SATA. We're going to need at least one SATA, maybe two. Molex. I don't think we're going to need Molex, so maybe put that aside. So SATA will be for the drives that we put in the system. Toss it. Uh, what we got there? That's the another SATA. Another so let's SATA. keep that around. Let's so hold on to it. Right. And that's going to be for the, um, one, one. Either the video card or for the main CPU power. Can we take a look? It is unlabeled, but we have That's going to be... Hmm. Is that a... Take a peek? Take a peek? Yeah. Uh, Go for it. Take it away. This is for video card, so we'll explain that in a minute when we hook up the video card. Yeah. So first things first, let's get the main power supply... Uh, Cable yeah. hooked up. The big, big, that long one is for main power. Yeah, so there's two ends to it. On this particular modular power supply, it's um, two connectors, and at the motherboard end, it's just one. So we're going to hook these up now because it may be trickier to do this once it's inside the case. Mm -hmm. So these two ends go into the, uh, the, this one here and this one here. So if you would do the honors. Gladly. Power supply if you like. Yes. And, last but not least, there we go. All right. 
Excellent. So those are the main power connectors. Um, we're also going to need at least one SATA set. Um, you could put this in the case and then connect all these, but it's yeah, it'll kind of tight. It'll be pretty tight because you'd be operating this little space yeah. here. This yeah. is a good order of operations to sort of follow. So this one here, and this is a um, cable that might throw some folks. Um, this is what's called the main CPU power connector. Um, it's a separate um, sort of main feed that goes into the motherboard and is actually in this corner down here of the motherboard. Um, so there's it's split in two. This particular board requires eight pins, which means they're going to join together into one eight-pin connector. And that means this end goes into this this side of the board. Pardon me. So we're, it's going to be this side of the power supply. I'm going to put that in there. And modular power supplies make this really easy. This is not the only option if right. you want. You can go cheaper, uh, much cheaper. Modular um, makes everything really easy, though. Yeah, especially if you're dealing with a small case like this. Yeah. You want a modular supply because you can leave out the cables you're not using. If you have a uh, hardwired power supply, you're going to have to um, find a place for all the cables you're not using. So these here are for the SATA drives, which we'll get into in a minute. I'm just going to plug them in quick. Blink. One and two. And one good thing to do anytime you are PC building especially if you're going to have a hard time getting access to the parts later on, is to just double check how snug these are, because one of the most common things that will happen when something doesn't boot is that something isn't plugged in firmly enough. Oh, never hurts to give a little extra, uh, extra, extra love and care. Yeah, so there we go. I think that's good. So um, this um, mounting here, I think we're going to have to take this off the stand, only because of Sure, the, just for stability and yeah, so we're going to access. For a minute. Please excuse us while, right. we, while we move this aside. While we cable manage. All right, so here's our space. Now, the question is, which end is up? <laughs> um, so what I would suggest is, um, take your best guess. Well, actually, don't. don't now that I think don't, because the fan's here. The fan's there, and it's, <laughs> we wanted to vent out that way. Pretty, so made that pretty easy for us. All right. Cool. All right. Let's see if the cable will hold, or excuse me, the holes line up. Why, it yes, should. They, sure why? They do. It sure should. All right, looking good. Bam. Okay, now the question is, where are the screws? Are these I got them, yes. Just came with the... Uh, I believe so. Oh, okay. So that was very kind of them to give us all these uh, cable wraps here. Yeah, I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's where I got those from. Yeah, no, they look right. That looks right. And if they fit, that's where they're going anyway. That's extremely true. All right. Beggars can't be choosers, I say. <laughs> all right, so time to apply the teeth. Ah. Uh, all right. The all oldest right. tool, some say. <laughs> take two or take three. Why not? Wow, so generous. There we are. All right. I'll get the first one in, and if you'd like to... Uh, do the honors on the rest. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see. Is that actually? Yeah, give me a little pressure against yeah, the wood. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm just gonna hand these off to you to do the rest. Want to do it? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So the setup. Seems so the studio audience can see what we're doing here. I'm basically just putting four screws through holes in the back of the case, um, and into the body of the power supply. And again, if you're feeling lazy or you don't have enough screws, two will probably do. Um, Take it away. All right. Let's see. Where's the other one here? Depending on the build, there's some different places you can put your power supply. It can hang off the top. It can go uh, on the bottom like it is here. Um, it's okay. So um, you have some options. Yep. By the way, we've had people just arguing about static wristbands in the comments. How important are they and when? Oh, people get really up in arms about grounding yourself and standing on certain materials while you're building and static wristbands and such. Um, John, do you have any... Do you have any hot takes on those things? Well, I've been building PCs for on 15 years, and I haven't, as far as I know, fried anything yet by static. But then again, I live in New York. Um, depending on where you live, if you're living in a humid climate with a lot more um, uh, static electricity, you're living in the desert or someplace like that, you may want to use that. Yeah, um, I, I, I never ground myself for anything. I haven't, either. It's yeah. not, maybe it's not good, but I've that never, a, and I've never not, broken anything. That's not to judge that you shouldn't do it, or depending on where you... Uh, just, yeah, to say yeah. one side is inherently like super correct about it. Um, right. It's very circumstantial. So yeah. do me a favor, man, while we're attacking. Yeah, yeah. Just squeeze it over a little bit. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. The, the hole wasn't. Wah! 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 Uh, wasn't quite lining up there. Um, All right. Yeah, it's it's a nice precaution. It can I think it can psych a lot of people out, or maybe first time builders like they see online like put down a tarp and wear all rubber and wear a suit, wear a hazmat suit. I mean, that said, anytime you're inside the case, it never hurts to tuck the metal of the case or to tuck something metal nearby to yeah. dissipate any sort of a, that's, a that's not like That's not like urban legend. That, you know, static is a real, is a real phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, it's not uh, usually not live, do or die. But. Yeah, so there's that. I mean, but I would, uh, you know, I would do what you feel most comfortable with, especially if you've spent a whole pile of money on components. It's mm -hmm. certainly a... Uh, yeah. Oh, that's in a hole. Um, Go figure. Yeah, never mind me. We got three screws in. The fourth one is down here. For some reason, there isn't one lining up here, so I'm going with three. 
That's not going anywhere. Fine by me. All right, and we've got our power supply in. Boom, really coming together. All right, so let's take all these cables and <laughs> put them off to the side. This mess. Yeah, this mess. Yeah, there's nothing we can do, do about there that. There really is really. not. Yeah. It's just a lot of extra It's like cable. way too long. The nice thing about this case is that you won't see inside it once it's done. The weird so. thing about this case is that these, the weird thing about these wires is these are the ones that came with the, the case, case. Yeah. and they're way too long for the case. Yeah, there's a lot of extra slack there. I mean, and yeah, I don't know where you, you could run it out to something over there. Yeah, a little yeah. odd, but yeah. yeah. So let's get this back up on the, uh, on the riser. You want to lift the case and I'll put the riser yeah. in there? Okay, great. Okay, excellent. Going. All right, we stable? I think so. Yeah, push the all right. Okay, so. Lots of wires to plug in. All right, so where do we go now? Where do we go next? So we, do, we haven't installed any drives yet, so we'll no. put the SATA cables aside. That's what those are for, though. That is what they are for. They will be for our drives. We have a question. Okay. Why only a 550-watt power supply? You could go with something uh, 600, 700. We're only going to ever put one video card in here, and the minimum requirements for the video card, I believe, if you look on the box, are... Um, 400. I'll check it out. So, yeah, the wattage requirements of the uh, CPU and the GPU that we're putting in here sort of come in, I think, around 500. So Minimum, we, 500 watt or greater. Yeah, so I, I think we're fine. Um, you could go a little higher if you want to have a little more overhead. Yeah. Yeah, the, that's the thing. People always usually put more than they need, which is a good idea because it leaves room for expansion. That way, if you do want to add a different card in the future, you don't have to buy a new power supply alongside it, um, kind of set it and forget it type thing. But if you only know you're ever going to put one card in. So I just plugged in the main power connector over here, which um, I don't know if that's going to be visible, so I'll tilt it up a little bit. Um, over here in sort of the edge I'll of hold the board, you got it? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, on the edge of the board was the main power connector. The next one that's going to go in is the CPU power connector. Let's see which way that goes. So this one's going to require a little bit of finagling, so mm -hmm. maybe let's put the case down. Doink. And it's in that corner, so I'm going to rotate the case. Okay. Maybe a little tricky for Take ABC. it away. It's actually tricky for me to see because basically this connector is buried way in the corner down here. So this one's going to take a little bit of Your finest work. Yeah, a little bit of finesse. Let's turn it that way. Go all the go all the way with it. All right. Let's see if I can do this. I'll do a jig. Yeah, yeah there we go. And entertain the folks. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the uh, what's the next step in the process? Because this actually went in, which I am shocked by. That was too easy. Yeah, no, I kind of want to take it out again and put it back in because I feel like that wasn't right. <laughs> it was too easy for you? Yeah, no, actually, I take it back. One one half went in, the other half didn't. Check the yet. sheet. Yeah, what do we have there? Boom, 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 power supply, motherboard. Uh, we can put the SSD on. Yeah, so this is, we're going to get the drive. So actually, if you want to find the drives, we have a hard drive and an SSD that um, we're going to be installing here. And if you want to get those unboxed and, hard drive. and uh, talked about, we will be well on the way to SSD. the next SSD. All right, that went in. So let's turn this around. So basically, this cable comes from the power supply. It's running to the corner of the board over there. Turn it a little bit this way. We're going to have to do some serious cable routing later once we put the, the uh, video card in, I believe. But for now, we're just going to do a uh, sort of a rough. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, you got a lot of capacity here, John. You really, yeah. You really so, yes, yeah, so this is part of um, you know why the price is a little bit high on this uh, build. This guy. One terabyte uh, <laughs> SSD. I mean, you can get a lot of games on there. Oh yeah. Um, and it will will be fast. It's a serial ATA SSD, yep. so it's um, not a cutting edge PCI Express one. But for the purposes of gaming. You're probably not going to notice the difference once yeah, the game is loaded. For sure. Um, hard drive. Just a ton work. of storage. Yep, for whether, whether it's the games you don't play very much or for your photo collection, your video collection, whatever. You know, you yeah, need. older games that don't need or won't benefit from more you know, yeah, speed. Yeah, and also just backing up your SSD. Yeah. SSD. So yeah. Um, this is where um, that big bracket that we took out in the beginning comes in. Uh, I'm gonna, I remember him fondly. Yeah, so here we go. We took the time together. Oh, sorry. Um, let's see. So we have... Um, this bracket here, which uh, is going to go in like this, and what we're going to do is mount the drives in first before we mount the uh, the bracket in. So we have to confess we did a little bit of test fitting before to see how this would work. How uh, dare you? Yeah, I know. Actually, being prepared, right? Um, so we have a a bay down here in the case, which I'm going to tilt up a little bit. Maybe it will be visible to Hopefully, the camera. Hopefully, we can dream. Where I'm pointing here is a, um, a vertical bay, which runs up and down the inside of the case. And that's um, fitted for a 3.5-inch uh, hard drive, which would be this. That's that guy. So we're going to um, try it a couple of ways and see how it fits. Trial and error, the best part of any build. Oh, yeah. So hopefully, we get it right. All right. In like Flynn? Almost. Yes, we are. Okay, so now we need screws. Um, oh, dear. <laughs> Back to our bowl of screws. <laughs> we have a question while you dig for the right ones. All right. Please. Why aren't you using a liquid cooler? 
Um, well, uh, we're not overclocking, for one. Um, which <laughs> Dude, is, this case is small. Yeah, this case is, yeah, the case, yeah, the, the, you could perhaps get a very small liquid cooling unit in here, but we don't intend for this to be an overclocking ready build, and if you were looking for something like that, I would definitely suggest a mini tower or a tower case. Yeah, yeah. Um, to allow for more airflow and also for the uh, cooler. Mm -hmm. This should this should get the job done. It is still a heavy, relatively heavy duty cooler. So yeah, this is it, it's air, but it's it's no slouch. Yeah. So we need a screw that's going to fit in here. So I know that the um, that the kit came with one, or it came, these here came with ones that are meant for that bay. Mm. Try to figure out which ones they are. So this is the trial and error part of the uh, the operation. All right. Could work. Could. Okay, so this screw goes in. Now the question will be, does it interfere with anything else that we're putting in later? So I may have to take that out again later. So, we'll find out. So when things don't work, just remind me of that screw. That <laughs> we'll do. I'm only putting one screw in um, because it's already got a crack there and it's not going anywhere. It's living so dangerously. Yeah, there we go. We, we, we don't mess around. So where is our... Uh, oh, here it is. There, right in front of you. All right, so now the SSD. Um, that's the guy. Small, so, small. not an M.2, but... Yeah. So tiny, look how much smaller it is than the regular <laughs> hard drive. So this one, um, there's a bunch of places you could put it in this case. You yes. could put it here, you could put another one next to it. But there's also a place you could put it under here. And the reason we're not putting it up top here is we're going to put a uh, Blu-ray drive in there later. So let's see. We're going to turn this over and figure out how this mounts. So Doink. let's turn this. We're just sorry to keep obscuring it to the camera, but basically this is going to go like this. So that means this drive needs to go like this. Okay. Got to put so yourself in the case. That is really a memory castle, but <laughs> the case. <laughs> so you can't see it from this side, but the uh, SSD holes line up over here. And we're going to just start throwing some screws in there. And hopefully they will be the right ones. Love throwing screws and things. Yeah. So let's Left and right. All right. So I'm just going to get a couple in here and... Do it up. All right. um, advantages of an SSD over a regular hard drive. Why would you get one? Why do you need one? Hard drives are cheaper and they have more capacity. Uh, you don't know, it boots your system a lot faster. If you install Windows on your SSD, your start times are, are A-OK. -okay. Yes, much uh, faster. Game much launches, faster. much quicker. Game loads much quicker. Um, I know any, any player known Battleground players out there, uh, if you move your game to the SSD, you'll get quicker loads and uh, loot will spawn in quicker and the doors will like react to you faster. <laughs> it can be the difference between life and death. Right. So here's um, the thing, if you're yeah. playing on, um, online like massively multiplayer stuff, does an SSD make a difference? Um, it does, not, not, as, not once the game and everything's kind of loaded in, but initial, initial load times to areas and stuff like that, much like initial boots on Windows, are a little, f a little faster. So it doesn't um, help you with your online lag? Or pro like probably not, no. No, okay. But Mo if you're some performance, but mostly, uh, mostly initial load based. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So yeah, so if you play a lot of single player games, or um, what, what sort of uh, games, what game genres would you say would make the most sense to? Uh, um, anything data hit, like Football Manager, benefit mm -hmm. from an SSD? Oops. It's like all data, and that just, yeah, mm. put that on your SSD, it'll crunch real fast. Um, like I said, uh, PUBG. Um, like again, first person shooter that has levels, small. is that a? Uh, yeah, 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 anything where you're going to be loading new checkpoints a lot, um, any load times, or any, any game like... Uh, Probably like an uh, Elder Scrolls game, I imagine, because you pop in and out of things and it has to load interiors, out to your, uh, exteriors, so those are all a little quicker. Any, any time that cuts down on loads uh, right. helps. Fair enough. So question? meanwhile, oh, we have a question. What's better, Ryzen 3 or Intel i3? Intel i3. Hmm. Okay, so that's a good question. Depends on what you're doing. Um, As always. Yeah, I mean, Ryzen 3 in its early days showed a little bit of latency in terms of gaming. Um, so you can see, a um, depending on the resolution you're running at and the... Um, and the card that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. um, you could see some hit in terms of gaming um, latency, which is getting better on a sort of piecemeal basis. So if you're doing, um, uh, excuse me, if you're doing strictly gaming, I would probably say an i3. It really depends, though, on what you're doing. Um, if you're looking for cores, if you want to do a lot of uh, data crunching, um, Ryzen's going to win there because with Give me some cores, man. Right, so unless you get like the highest end um, current i3, yeah. you're going to get two cores and no hyper-threading. So basically just two cores. Right. Whereas with Ryzen 3, you'll get four cores straight up. Yeah. Yeah. So in all that talk, I went and put in four very small screws Magic. into the bracket here. We now have the SSD hidden underneath. And we've got our drive bracket. So I think it's time to put this in, unless yeah. I'm forgetting. I think you're well, you know what, now that I think about it, before I put this in, we should probably wire up this drive here. Yeah, because then it's going to be hard to get, hard to, get to. Yep. Yeah. So a couple of things. Grab yeah, that SATA. Right, SATA power cable. So we're going to take this um, blade-shaped connector here and put it. Awkward angle, but Yeah, we got, got it. it. 
Let's see. Hopefully that's right. 50-50 chance. Oh, we win. Hey. Okay. All right, that's one. The other one's going to go into the SSD, which we'll put in later. Sure. Um, but we need a da uh, SATA data cable. So I'm going to go digging in the motherboard box. Go find it. All right. Um, while we're doing that, we have another question. All right, bring it. Is it best to install your OS on your SSD? Yes, definitely. Uh, your initial boot times will be faster. Some system process stuff will probably be faster too. Um, but yeah, that initial boot time, if you were to time it or just have it used a hard drive system for so long, you'll notice an amazing difference um, that you might attribute to like, oh, this is a new OS, it's just, OS is just faster. It's, it's, it's actually your SSD. Uh, yep. The load times are crazy fast. And most, if not all, higher end slash mid-range laptops now have SSDs in them. Um, and your initial load times and boot times, which is particularly noticeable on laptops because you close them and open them all day, you shut them off, turn you know, turn back on later. Um, the initial load times, if your if your OS is installed on your SSD, they're a lot faster. So definitely, yeah. definitely want to put that there. I know you have precious, usually precious little space on SSDs because they're smaller because it's expensive to get bigger ones, but uh, you should definitely designate some of your SSD space to to that. Some laptops yeah. even include just tiny. SSD drives just almost solely for that purpose, just to get the OS on it, and then most of your almost all of your storage is going to be on the hard drive. Yep, 100% what Matt said. That. That. So there we go. All right, so while Matt was um, telling us about SSDs, I went and plugged in the SATA cables. Um, so I'm going to do a little tilt here so that it's a little more visible what I did. But on the edge of the board here, you've got um, SATA connectors, serial ATA connectors, which I plugged two cables into. Um, those are going to the... Um, SSD, excuse me, the hard drive, which is over here, and the other is going to go to the SSD. That's this one that's hanging out up here. Once we mount that up there, mm. so just um, plug that all in before we put the bracket, uh, the bracket back in. So I think, let's see, what other parts do we have over there? We have the the, uh, the video card and the disk drive. The disk drive. Okay, I'm wondering if the video card has to go in first before this bracket. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm thinking it might get in the way. Let's take a look. It's not it's not implausible. Um, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. And if not, let's take it out again. No um, big deal. So let's do this. Um, so we've got our hard drive in here. We've got the SSD under here. Um, we're going to smush this cable a little bit under here. We'll probably adjust it a bit later. And then this, like so, should fit like that. Excellent. Now, which screws did we use? That was a great question. I was hoping you remembered because, boy, they're somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're in here. Um, you know what? Only one way to find out. Yeah, I think I just dropped them on the table before, so probably, whichever whichever probably, bowl you put them in is probably this one. All right, one. well, grab your lightsaber and let's, uh, let's, go to let's, town. let's get to it. Yeah. All right. This looks good. This looks All like right. a screw, and this looks like a screw hole, so and I'm not going to fuss. Yeah, this one isn't working out. Let's see. Let's try a different one. Ooh, someone picked the wrong screw. Oh, no. Yoink. I think these are right. No fuss. I usually did the magic touch there, so let me have, let you have at it. All right. I think I have a good feeling about this one. All right, go for it. I will go behind you in a moment, for a moment. Grab this. So while you are doing that, I'm hoping the only thing I'm a little afraid of oh, is that that's why. Yeah. Oh, okay, need a little bit of uh, yeah. adjustment. I'm pulling this out in the meantime. This is our Ultra Blu-ray drive. So, oh. That's we, gone forever. Okay, so actually pause for a moment. Um, this is the fun part of the build, where you hold it up in here and you shake it up and <laughs> you down. You make sure everything stays. Nailed There's it. There's a screw. All right. Good test. All right. We screwed everything else incorrectly. All right. There we go. Try again. Are we uh, stable? Okay. I don't know. Yeah, we're centered. Looking good. Looks good. Looking good. Steady. All right. Let's see. So what's up with this screw hole here? This yeah, it wasn't quite lined up All right, somehow. Yeah. I'll try turning. You can wiggle it a bit and see if... It's like resisting as if the hole's not lined up, but the rest of the screws are in, so I don't know how that's possible. Might be the wrong screw. Could be. I'm just getting right. it wrong repeatedly. Let's see. There's a couple of different sizes This here. one looks smaller, actually. It yeah, might be this one. This. this is the same, I think, was what you got. Yeah, oh, there, there it is. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Ta -da. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, if we could label every screw, we would, but... Who has the time? Yeah, and I'm just going to turn this around briefly to get the screw in the back. Mm -hmm. Um... Trust me, there's a screw in the back here. I'll hold this bracket in. in place. Believe us. Believe Take us. our word for it. Yeah. We haven't lied to you this long. Nope. We think. All right, hold it still if you would. Not intentionally. Okay. <laughs> Can't be held accountable. Yep, there we go. <laughs> all right, so looking good. Looking all right. All right, so that's all mounted. Now, we were looking at the Ultra Blu ray drive. Yes. So. Ultra Blu-ray. What's Ultra Blu-ray? What is Ultra Blu-ray? It's, it's very shiny movies. Uh, yes, very shiny movies. Basically, movies at 4K. Now, the thing is, is you haven't seen Ultra Blu-ray very extensively on PCs because, basically, 
it's a uh, digital rights management nightmare. It's, it's the worst. You yeah. know, I was so surprised when I found out this was a thing years ago, obviously. But like, I was like, you can't just you can't just put a it's not can't like just put a disc in and play. Like, nope, no, it's crazy. You yeah, no, you have so to get you have to work around the system or get buy the movie. Uh, well, it's not only by digitally. Movie. It's it's kind of nuts. Well, so if you want to do it via disc, the mm -hmm. the key thing is is that on the PC side, the only way you can do this is via um, digital rights management that is built into KD Lake Intel processors. So there is an issue there where you have to have a KD Lake chip, which is a seventh gen current generation. Right, chip, the newest chip. So thus the i7 7700K in here, and you also need to install software that will come with a drive. You can't just use Windows like Windows. Yeah, it doesn't. Players. You can't just launch it in Windows Media Player or right. VLC Player or anything. Right. Even in Windows 10, the DVD player doesn't come standard anymore. Never mind the 4K Blu-ray player. So cool. yeah, so you you basically have to buy a kit like this, and then you have software that you'll install later on. But this basically has the ability to do 4K Blu-ray because of the the um, uh, the processor in there, mm -hmm. and then also we have a five and a quarter inch. Uh, let me just uh, get all this stuff off the table here. Um, has a five and a quarter inch drive bay that we can install the drive into. So we figured, hey, why not? Let's do it. This is totally optional, however. Um, adds about 120 bucks to the build, and a little more complication. So we're popping off the uh, um, front panel there, and sliding in the drive. Away it's we go. Bang! Goes into the Beautiful. CPU cooler. Look at that. So you know what? Bye. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. Yep, there we go. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's why I said it was optional. Yeah. Yep. So right. in case you couldn't see what was happening there, we tried to drop it back into here, but when it was all the way in the tray, it was too... Yep. <laughs> it couldn't so go all the way in. Conceivably, so. you yeah, so conceivably, you could do this with a different cooler. Or, Shucks. Yeah, or you could put the uh, cooler fan on the other side, but yeah. then that sort of defeats the airflow purpose. Yeah, yeah. So we said in the beginning that this was a maybe. Possible. Kind of moved into a no unless you choose a different cooler. You cooler's. change coolers, yeah. So let's put the cap back on One here. of many complications you can run into. Yeah. So there is that. So there you go. So you just saved 120 bucks. Turn it. All right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't need this um, extra SATA cable now, do we? No, we do, because we didn't plug it into the SSD. Right. So let's go back to that. Get up. Get up under that tray. All right. So our boot SSD is under here. When we mounted this here, we didn't actually plug the cables into it. So I'm just going to do sort a of doing it's doing a Spider-Man on the bottom half of this bracket. Yeah, it totally is. So there's that plugged in, and then we have the power, which is going in there. And that's going here. Now this is not the most elegant wiring job, and probably after this, over beers, we will reorient some of the uh, the cabling in here yeah. to make the airflow a bit better. But so let's think this through: hard drive connected, SSD connected. Blu-ray drive, unfortunately, sent to the, sent to the cleaners. Um, oh, man. And um, the only thing I think we have left hardware-wise is the, the graphics card. Graphics card. Which I okay. put right here. Okay. Ba -ba. Sorry, Blu-ray drive. Can't win them all. All right. I already, I already kind of unveiled this before, but... All right, well, I can never do it too many times. So what we have here is a um, GTX 1080 card. This is actually by Zotac. Um, it's a GTX 1080 Mini, um, about two inches shorter than a typical 1080 card. We discussed that before. Mm -hmm. Typical ones are a little bigger. This one has um, a uh, single eight-pin power connector on the top that we're going to plug the power supply into. So if you'd be so kind as to take good care of that, and I will free up the bay or the um, slots needed for this. So I'm going to rotate the case a little bit this way. There we go. All right, don't get slobber on it, man. Let's see. We're just hanging out, me and it. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to remove these. Uh, there's a bracket on the back of the case here, which I will turn to show you in a moment, which uh, actually requires two screws to be removed. Yeah, so there's a series of slotted port bays, essentially, that uh, they're locked in when you, when you get the case, obviously. You don't need to unscrew them unless you're putting something into that slot, in this case, the graphics card, so it can, so these ports, Wow, this requires a lot of screws on. face here. out the back of the system. So you can actually plug in your monitor and whatever else straight in. Yeah, so this case. Uh, this, has, this one's fighting back, though. Yeah, it is. So there's a couple of. Whoops, man, let it go. Um, there's a couple of uh, brackets back here. So I'm removing three or four screws here to um, get this bracket off. Do it. Working it. Do it. see. Hey, there it goes. All Achoo. right. So this is a, I didn't need to take this off, actually. I'll put it back on later. But this basically lets you put a sideways card in there. And that's the opening for the video card uh, that we're going to take out these first. It's a double wide, Didn't mean right? to turn it away from you. But. Yeah, that, that's okay. Actually, I just realized, you know that long skinny screwdriver we were using? Yeah. Um, or maybe the lightsaber might work. I think this one might be better off. Yeah, let's see. Um, so basically, we needed, we needed a long shaft screwdriver to fit through this hole here. Yeah. So one of those things where hopefully you have a well-equipped toolkit at home. 
Otherwise, you may be uh, running to the hardware store. Yeah. Uh, just Little odds and ends. Every case is different, too, so that's always... You don't really know what you're getting into unless you've built in a case before. They right. all have their little idiosyncrasies. Um, but you'll figure it out. I, oh, faith, yeah. I have faith in you. Oh, yeah. Bam. I'm at it, man. All Going right. to town. All right, so maybe you can rotate it a little closer to the camera. Yeah, sorry. I should, probably show, you, I should probably show you what I'm doing. And I'll hold it steady. So basically, that's going into the first PCI Express slot. Um, and Cables you know, in my way. Yeah, they're just fighting back. They're rebelling. All right, there we go. Right. Can't quite see what I'm doing. Uh, yep, take your time. It's incredibly hard to find the slot drive, Entry. the slot on here. Yeah, I really can't see from this angle. All right, so why don't I take it off the... Oh, oh you got I it. I spoke too hey, soon. Hey, yeah, I hear a click. Yeah. That sounds good. All right, excellent. Nice work. We're in. All right, so let's put a screw in there. It's really actually kind of loose. Wobbling, yeah, it? it is. Let me take a look. Uh, let me turn it a bit. Yeah, turn it all the way around. I actually can't see if it is in or not. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, no, it's not. There's, okay. nowhere to, there's nowhere to really look. Yeah. Oh, you know what it is? Okay, hold on. Here's a problem. Hold the card. Hold the card. So oh, Hold the phone. Yep, we have taken another thing here. So I took out the first and second. It you turns need, out ah, you need to take the third. out the third one. That's why I wasn't yeah. clicking in. That would be the problem. So what I'm going to do is move this over here. This one. I guessed and I guessed wrong. Shh. Well, shoot. Yeah. I did this on my own build, actually. It's coming back to me now. Yeah, I was I like, mean, why won't this go? And it turns out that's why. I think we have a question. Oh. Go for what it. are we going to do with this computer after you're done with it? Well, we're going to hook it up to um, a monitor, see if it boots, and if it does, then we're going to try and hook it up to this large screen TV and see if it boots. Um, and after that, it's installing Windows and getting out some 4K gaming with it. Whoa, there we go. Uh, you actually need to be over uh, one slot. I got it. There we go. It's in the... Ah, uh, uh, I gotcha, gotcha. I, you know, I, got, I got a better angle on yeah, it. Yeah, uh... Here we go. Hold on a second. Wow, that's actually a trick. It's, it's fighting back. Hold on a moment. I'm gonna try you know it. what it is? I actually think the heat sink's in the way of the card. Really? Huh. Okay. Well, if we have to remove the heat sink, we can, I suppose. Um, How dare it? Let's see. Right? Am I, am I wrong in that diagnosis? No, it's you are not. really buttoned up right against it. Surely they can't, have, they can't have put that in the way. They did. They really did. All right. So we have, a, we have an issue. Huh. So there's a large heat sink on this board here that seems to be getting in the way of the... Uh, and it doesn't come off. Interesting. Hmm. That's interesting. Let me turn it a bit. I don't want to break it, but... Never. I'm hoping this is just adhesive. So that's interesting. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Matt, if we could get the GTX 1080 Founders Edition card that we have, which I don't actually have over here. Uh -huh. It's on the bench over on the other side. Meanwhile, I'll juggle this over here. I can grab it. Yeah, do you want to grab, grab it? I'll we'll, grab it. And we'll see if it fits. We're so, going to get a new card. If this one's not going to work, right. so be it. Right, so fair enough. So this is strange. Um, it seems like there's a little bit of plastic over here that's butting up against the heat sink on this board. So um, we're going to have to just sort of improvise with a different card and see if it uh, will fit. If it doesn't, then... <laughs> Actually, there it went. <laughs> so it, it was just the angle. All right, so you know what? I'm going to continue screwing this in. Um, these fellows are going to come back with another card, and I'm going to be like, false alarm. Sorry, guys. So apologies to Asus and Zotac. We had a little bit of trouble there getting it past the... Uh, uh, heat sink there, but it's all right. It's not the heat sink's fault. It may actually just be the angle that we're working at here. So, anyway, I'm going to continue on here. So the cooler is into place. Wider. Okay. You said it's on the bench, though. I don't know if you meant in the box. Put this on here. So we're basically putting two screws in here to hold it in place. We're good. All right. So... I don't, I don't know that this is right. the problem. So the card is back in the, uh, the case here, just a little bit of finagling, and you'll notice up here now there is a 8-pin power connector, which is all by its little lonesome, and we have a cable for it. So I'm going to hunt around here until I find the power connector. All right. We're good, Matt. Yeah. So it turned out that I just needed to wiggle the... I just um, went and fought somebody for this. You fought somebody Did you tell it. me we're good? We don't even need it? Oh, well, I got it, just in case. Wow, oh, yeah. Well, this is an interesting uh, learning moment. Would this have fit? Yeah. Yeah. I've been all right. Think so? Yeah. So this is a, just to demonstrate, this is a full-size GTX 1080 card. And you can see here the difference. And Quite uh, a bit longer. I'm going to just dry fit this next to it. You can totally see the 
length difference that we're yeah. talking about here. It'll allow for some better airflow. So yeah, it just took a lot of wiggling. Um, Go figure. You know, some things in life just take a lot of wiggling. So we are. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't believe that that would truly get in the way no, of I mean, installing a car. That would be crazy. That's I mean, right where the. It's a gaming. That's it's right a, where the lane is. Like, yeah, I mean it's a gaming board. Yeah. Um, so you would think that you know they would have prefit it with gaming cars. And Surely. indeed, the problem was not uh, theirs, or not theirs, it was us. It was, in fact, us. All uh, right. We have a question while you're plugging right. things in. Fair enough. How loud do you expect this, and are there any ways to reduce the noise on the case? Um, ask us in five minutes. <laughs> um, no, seriously, um, the Noctua fans um, tend to be about as quiet as air-cooled fans come. Um, we could go with water, probably, for a little bit of less um, noise, but... If you're bringing a water cooling system in here, you're going to be introducing fans on the radiator on the water cooling, so yeah. you're not really gaining anything there. Um, in terms of the video card, um, I mean, they could conceivably look into the NVIDIA settings and run it. There are settings there for reducing the Right, to make it a little quieter. Right, so there is that. Uh, but we'll see when we uh, get it in there. I'm just trying to find the connector for the video card, which I know we plugged in and is... Um, Actually, no, we didn't plug it in. No, we didn't. We didn't. There we go. Thank you, sir. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where that cable was. All right, so let's plug that in over here. So this is basically the 8-pin power cable that's going into the video card. I'm going to plug one end of it into the power supply, which still has an available notch. And that's going in there. Easy peasy. Right. And this was one of the concerns about this case that we have. And we'll find out when we put the cover on. Will it clear... The cover. I think so. It, it looks may. like it's shorter than the bracket still, so it should be good. Yeah, otherwise we may well still be putting that other card in here yeah. that has a lower profile. We'll find out. You will find out. Only one way to know for one sure. One way to know. So let's see. Hmm. Sorry, I had a little bit of trouble plugging that in there. The cables are rebelling. Yeah, there we go. This will be better. It'll have a little more flex. Yeah, I think that'll clear for sure. All right, so let's put this down here. Again, you know, given a little more time and, you know, if... Anybody wants to stop by after class and you know <laughs> reroute all of this? You know we'd be happy. That's to it. There's not a ton. Yeah. Of, there's not much else to do with it. Really. No, I would pretty much just restrain a lot of yeah. this, like along the sides. It's allow kind of the only spot for it physically. Yeah. So. so. All right. So we're just going to put this on the back. Sweet. All right. Sweet so. deal. Well, I dropped the Return of the brackets. I got you. Thank you very much. Teamwork. Hey. <laughs> Makes the dream work. <laughs> all right. So. If you could just hold the case still, I'm just going to put a bracket down here to cover up this Teamwork hole. part two. Tar part two. All right. There's a giant hole in the back of the case here we're just trying to cover up. You don't want that. Dust and what have you. Not, right. that, not that this is a dust proof case by any stretch. Ah, you know what? Doing this at this angle is tricky. So oh, yeah. What? Give us some credit. We're building on a, on a, on a, a riser. angle on a stand here. Here's the thing. After this, we're going to put the cover on and we're going to boot it up. So I think we take it off the, the riser. I think so, too. Let's do that. So if you could take the riser out. Let's put it flat. I'm just going to drop this thing in here. Doo, doo, doo. All right, there we go. Now we don't Bam. have gravity working against us. Now if you mess up, you've, you're out of excuses. Yeah, I, uh, pretty much. Well, you know, I probably, you. probably chose the wrong screw. That's what it is. Let's see. Classic mistake. There we go. Um, way, you're not getting the screwdriver back, by the way. Oh, man. Yeah, this, this one's much better. You have to fight Will for it. All right. Actually, uh, we have um, another question. Bring it. Okay. You there. Yeah. Thank you. Someone says, you chose DDR4 2400 megahertz. Was wondering, what's the medium term frequency to get? Um, the medium term frequency? I'm not entirely sure what that means. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're, yeah. um, sure you're getting at. Well, here's the thing is, once we get into the BIOS, what we could do is we could take a look at what the so-called XMP profiles are for this RAM and see um, what we can automatically um, sort of lever it up to based on the... Uh, supported frequencies of the board. So once we get this fired up, we can mess around in the BIOS a little bit and see what, what options it gives see us what's there. See what. Yeah. So, um, all right. I there is one more, I mean, we could put this on here, but I won't bore the yeah. audience with that. We have a little bit of hole Forget there. it. Forget, Forget about it. it. Forget about it. All right. I'm so, working here. All right. <laughs> all right. Have one of those. Where, where did these come from? From the side. We took them off for visibility, and I'm not entirely sure they go back Me on. Me neither. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there you go. They're basically just fan filters to uh, okay. keep some dust out. Uh, the, oh, yeah, it goes like that. Gotcha, and then gotcha. you sort of smush it on with yeah. the clicking. All right, we've got a cover. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. There we are. Let's see if it goes. It works. What a seamless, All right. what a seamless job. All right, a couple more screws just to hold the cover on because we're going to be cocky here and assume this is just going to boot up, right? 
Oh, oh, yeah. We're not going to open this again? No. No? Never again. Never again? One, right. one and done. One and done. All right, well, here's the thing. If it doesn't boot, we got to go back to that little cable in the corner that we were yes. uh, having some doubts about. But I, I think that that's was our only point of failure. I think so. I, well, we we'll say, jinx, we thus jinxing ourselves, for there. sure. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to work fine until I said until that. Until you said that. All right, well, that's cool. Um, let's bless it with the other 1080 card. Look All at right, this. there we go. So here we go, completed build. Now we're just going to get out some cabling. It's like a set-top top box. Yeah, it's your set-top box with a, excuse me, a um, very large screen monitor behind us, which hopefully we're going to have it running on momentarily. Mm -hmm. So let's start plugging stuff in. Take that if you would. All right. We need to, uh, I'm going to just go off screen for a moment and grab a power uh, strip. Okay. We'd like to have to, uh, the ability to plug it into um, power. the wall. There we go. The wall I'm here. Now we're cooking. All right. Hopefully not with fire, <laughs> though. I see lights inside the case already. If you could just grab these things for me. Yes. Yeah. And I'm just going to grab a monitor and bring it up here. Oh, peripheral central. There we go. All right. And the monitor. So we're going to start with a, uh, this is not a 4K monitor, but we're just going to use this for initial diagnosis. To make sure it boots. To make sure it boots. I'm seeing rainbow colors inside the case, though, since that's, oh, yeah, that's, so that's a good sign. already a good sign. Yeah. We're just plugging um, keyboard and mouse into the back here. We're just hiding back here from you. Yeah, for the inevitable... Uh, uh, rotten tomatoes. Cat, yeah, it's cat holes. <laughs> and, all right, so we're just getting the monitor. So you get the power of the monitor. What's this here? This is nothing relevant. The story of a girl. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a, let's see, we've got a cable uh, going to the keyboard, cable to the mouse. We've got to hook up the monitor. It's stepping off again. Right. Bye, John. Oh, I'll be back. DisplayPort cable. Um, that's going into the back of the monitor. And then into Trust the us. graphics card. All right. Do you know what model that monitor is? Uh, yes, I can read it to you. I'm sorry, I'm hiding back This is here. an Acer monitor, and it is the... The XG270HU. I believe it's a 25-inch monitor that supports AMD FreeSync, which does not sync with the GeForce card in here. But again, but this is just a test monitor. This is just a test monitor we're using. Yeah. So let's plug this in. Okay. I, 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 I'm afraid to say that I think that's it, but... I, I think it is. That's it. So... We're just going to put this next to it there because yeah. we've plugged in a keyboard and mouse, a regular wired keyboard yeah, and mouse. But like again, like the monitor, this is just for test purposes. The ter since you, the, the idea behind this was kind of the uh, living room, sit back and relax PC, the Razer turret, wireless, wireless, you can actually sit back and use your things and yeah. enough to play a game, not just enough to browse. Yeah, this is an interesting product. Yeah. I mean, before we um, break the suspense here and see if this will boot, it's basically a keyboard that you put on, it's wireless, you put on your lap and it folds out. <laughs> and you get a mouse pad on the right of it yeah. and it has a wireless mouse that you use on the pad. And basically this sits in your lap and you can game any PC game that requires um, keyboard input. Yeah. So Keyboard, mouse, tray, a, all in one. Yep, and it has a handy little dock here so you can put it in your wall unit next to your lovely Silverstone system. Mm -hmm. Like that, and charges. You can either hook it up via Bluetooth or via a USB dongle. All right, so what are we doing here? Uh, if this monitor's powered on, which... Yep. I know, believe it is. I like to well, let's take a look at the front. I think so. Can't quite see. I'm gonna try to. I don't want to hit you in the chin with the monitor. So let's see. Let's see. John's beating me up again. Yeah. We're good. good. It's live. Okay, hold on. All right, there we are. Hit and, um, it. And the, the power button. The moment of truth. Where is the power button? The system. Is it on Way my over side? by you. Yep. All right. I've done the honor. Energy star. Waiting. Did it just blink on? All right. Let's see. The, mo the moment of truth. No signal. I feel some whirring and whirling though. Okay. That suspense is killing me. It truly is. Okay. Got a lot of lights happening. We have lights. Graphics card's booting up. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. What do we got? Nothing? Nothing. That's ah. the uh oh. That's the uh oh? Ah, uh, all right. Let's try it one more time. Maybe the. Uh. Could be the monitor. Could be the monitor. Went to sleep, sees on us. Well, we're getting a power signal here at least, so the power LED is on. Mm hmm. So at least we hooked up that part, right? Hmm. No signal. All right, I wouldn't mess oh, with anything no. quite yet. The dreaded. Not booting. Not boot. 
All right, so if that's indeed the case, we'll just do a quick adjustment inside to that cable. And we'll trouble that be we'll the, troubleshoot uh, action. Yep, but we do have a light here, so that tells me something. Yeah, uh, most of these components are, are on and, and humming. Yeah, so we do have power at least coming into the power supply. So the question to me is, is the um, power switch connector hooked up correctly, which it may not be. It may not be. Right. It's possible. Okay, so we'll uh, give it a moment. Try it one more time. Actually, you know what? Yank the yank power. Let's see. Pull it. Pull the plug, literally. Pull the plug. You're out of line. Pull the plug. All right. Um, yeah, this happens. Obviously, if you've ever built a system that hasn't booted, it's a moment that you freak out. You're like, what did I ruin? Something's permanently broken. Nah. It's probably something small. It's 50-50. Yeah. Probably that it'll boot in the first place. Let's give it a, a clean Give it one start. more chance before we yep. go. Before we go digging. Before we go tinkering inside it. Okay. Nope. Okay. Nothing doing. All right. So let's... R.I.P. All right. So take it off. Okay. Let's get in there. Let's All fix right. it. Pull the power. All right. Let's fix getting her up. Out, getting out the... Our, it was our hubris. It was because I said that. Yeah, it's all right. It happens. Our hubris of sealing the case back up. <laughs> we never should have done it. There we go. All right. Taking it off again. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some deep consultation. A diagnostic dive? Yeah, I want to see about that power cable. Commune. Commune. Let's see. Let's take a look. Before you proceed, motherboard layout. There's Troubleshoot. <laughs> Final phase, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting. So I will show off the, uh, the page once we find it. Keep the searching. Um, yeah, the lights for the graphics card were on. The, yeah, the board lights were the on. The board lights were on. Yep, everything was on. Only so many options for... The other thing is we could also try hooking it up to the big TV and maybe it's a thing with the monitor. Maybe it is. Try an HDMI output. Um, if you want to do that, actually, while I'm flipping through here, that might be uh, exciting. HDMI Where's out. Yeah, because we have an HDMI cable here yep. um, hooked up to the big TV. Um, I'm going to plug this in here. Found some more HDMI. All right. Oh, oh you just want to you know, go. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So just leave that one plugged in and just yeah, bring yep. it over. Yep. Okay. Throw it in there. If you would. Okay. Now we want to switch this to, oh, let's see. Input. Dun -dun. Input. It could be the monitor. Odds are, odds are it's us. Let's, let's be yeah, real. Yeah, I mean, let's be real here. Yeah. Okay. Hit it. Hmm? Or I'll hit it. You get it. Hit it up. Hit, uh, hit, hit it up. A couple things. Yeah. One, we're all rooting for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, two, we have a lot of people commenting on cable management. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's terrible in here. <laughs> we acknowledge that. Hey, wait a minute. It was the monitor. <laughs> I feel so vindicated. <laughs> there we go. All right, so Republic of Gamers logo. I guess we're going to get a bio soon, aren't we, if we hit delete? There Display we port is the most wonky. So it never the works. There you go. Well, first time, anyway. Putting the cover back on. Why I there we are. That's a BIOS. Look at that. We've got a system. We've got it on a very large display as well. Now, all you need to do, Matt, is to get a beanbag chair, sit over there with the Ranger We have turret. a beanbag chair. This is not you that much of a stretch. It. Right, and there's your afternoon. Um, tell your boss that I said it was okay. Sweet. All right. Hey, Jonathan. Jonathan, it's okay. Yeah, but uh, you have to install Windows first and all your Steam games. Yeah, it'll be a while before I'm actually playing anything. Yeah, about 6 o'clock. Um, for, for those cable management commenters, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, it's, uh, it's a small case. There isn't... Obviously, we could tie them and route them neatly along the side, cable bind them. We would do that with more time. That's kind of a boring thing to do on stream. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's something that would, that's something that would, uh, would happen. Yeah, because inside this case, there's not a lot of airflow. I would definitely bind up with a zip tie. Yeah. Um, all the power supply cables off to one side and allow for at least airflow around the video card. You yeah. should be... Uh, I, feel, I feel some breeze coming out the back here for the, uh, the CPU cooler. So mm -hmm. we've got straight airflow going through there. It's the video card I'd be most concerned about once you crank up Battlefield yeah. 1 at 4K. Sure. So what are we going to do after we get a beer is um, stick uh, Windows 10 installation uh, yeah, yeah. on here. The most exciting and part of anyone's day yeah, is watching Windows install. Watch Windows install for 20, 30 minutes. But I don't think you want to all uh, be part of that. So with a final shot at the Asus ROG BIOS here. Courtesy of our good friend HDMI. Yes, there is that. <laughs> yes, um, we will not be using DisplayPort next time. Uh, no offense to your monitor racer, just the DisplayPort interface yeah. itself. So... High five. We did it. We got Once it. Once again. I'm John. I'm Matt. We'll be back next week with a build of the AMD Threadripper, which is AMD's um, 
high-end 16-core yeah. CPU. It's going to be long. It's going to be really involved, and on it's the going first, to be great. On the first day, we're allowed to show to you. Right, and it's going to boot. And it'll boot. We, it can, will I can, boot. I can almost guarantee it. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. This has been Random Access. As you said, Matthew Buzzy, John Burek, tune in. Reviews of many of these components and this build, as you said before, you can find out all the parts we use on Computer Shopper. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time on Random Access. Bye-bye. <laughs>